Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the course of communication skills. Dear students, this course aims at your professional development because reading, writing, listening and speaking, these are the skills that will uh, forever help you in your professional life. Whatever you do, wherever you go, you need to have a good command on these skills. So this lecture is not only for the students of English language or literature, this is uh, aimed at all those students who are studying various disciplines uh, and preparing for various examinations, for example, PMS, CSS. So these skills can help you everywhere. So today in the series of the same lectures, we are discussing essay writing. So essay writing is a technical skill and that demands your concentration, your ability to write better and your ability to summarize things in order to bring them under subheadings or uh, the topic sentences. This lecture is divided into two main parts. So the first part is a theoretical that will give you theoretical knowledge of essay writing, uh, which will also tell you that uh, what are the kinds of essay and uh, uh, how to write a good essay. And the second part, till the end, that is uh, about practical tips for writing essays with examples. So I would strongly recommend you not to miss out that part because that is going to tell you how we can add topic sentence and how do we connect one paragraph with another, one sentence with another. So do watch the video till the end so that you can better understand uh, essay writing. Once you do it, uh, writing any essay until CSS level will not be a difficult job for you. So this video is for all those people who are preparing for any competitive exam or for any academic exam. This essay writing will help you or give you lifelong experience of writing essays. Essay writing is not as simple as it seems. It is definitely not about writing your ideas randomly. It is not uh, about writing without any structure or arrangement or oh, comprising many opinions at the same time which confuse the readers or making headings within one essay. So these are the mistakes that we commit while writing an essay. I've been teaching here since 2007 and I'm, I've been watching the essays written by the students. So the biggest mis mistake done by the student is that uh, uh, a student writes so many ideas in the same structure and those ideas do not have coherence uh, among them and those are random ideas which are having no planning before them. So we should avoid all these things which can uh, make our essay a confused whole. So we should try to go for the better tips that I am sharing through this video with you people. So what is an essay? An essay is generally a piece of writing that gives the author's own argument. Essays have traditionally been subclassified as formal and informal. Most of the times we are writing formal essays because we are writing them for the sake of examination and uh, if you are writing them for the player purpose then they can be informal ones. An essay is a short formal piece of writing dealing with a single subject. It is typically written to try to persuade the reader using selected research evidence. So in this not only we are addressing one topic, one subject, but also we are giving some research based evidence to persuade the reader. So we are writing in order to make a person believe that whatever we are saying is accurate and for that we should be focused on the single subject and also we should be giving statistics or uh, some research evidence that will uh, like we can share data, we can share statistics, we can share quotations uh, in order to make our essay an authentic material. There are certain types of an essay and these are the major types, uh, there can be uh, further types as well. We have descriptive essays, narrative essays, expository essays, 
a persuasive essay. Sometimes we are writing the description of something that comes in descriptive. Sometimes we are uh, almost telling a tale, so that comes in narrative. Sometimes we are exposing something, we are uh, talking about something and explaining it, that comes in expository. And sometimes we are persuading a reader about something that uh, we feel how it is, so that is in persuasive essays. Descriptive essay is said to be a cousin of narrative essay. A descriptive essay paints a picture with words. A writer might describe a person, place, object or even memory of a special significance. However, this type of essay is not description for the description's sake. The descriptive essays try to uh, communicate a deeper meaning through the description. In a descriptive essay, the writer should show, not tell, through the use of colorful words and sensory details. The best descriptive essays appeal to the reader's emotions with a result that is highly evocative. For example, if uh, a person is describing about a pizza, so he may say that it is uh, the pizza was delicious and hot. And the other person may say that it was hot, steaming, fresh and uh, uh, like uh, latest or uh, recently baked pizza. So that gives us uh, a better opportunity of understanding the picture of that very object. So we use descriptive words in it and those descriptive words allow us to show something, not to tell rather. So uh, the descriptive essay contains such words or use of such uh, 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 like uh, descriptive items which makes the essay forcible or it makes it uh, like it brings some forceful uh, element that uh, is there to convince the reader. In a narrative essay, the writer tells a story about a real life experience. While telling a story may sound easy to do, the narrative essay challenges students to think and write about themselves. When writing a narrative essay, writers should try to involve the reader by making the story as vivid as possible. The fact that narrative essays are usually written in the first person helps engage the reader. For example, I. So sentences give readers a feeling of being a part of the story when you're using the word I for that sake or we for that sake. A well-crafted narrative essay will also build towards drawing a conclusion or making a personal statement. So a narrative essay includes the reader within the essay when the first person pronoun is used and uh, the writer should be making it so clear, so vivid or so transparent as possible. Because it is only for this reason that he is able to engage the reader or get the attention of the reader for the essay. The expository essay is an informative piece of writing that presents a balanced analysis of a topic. In an expository essay, the writer explains or defines a topic using facts, statistics and examples. Expository writing encompasses a wide range of essay variations such as the comparison and contrast essay, the cause and effect essay, and the how to or process essay, like how to make sugar. Because expository essays are based on facts and not on personal feelings, like in narrative or descriptive essay. Writers don't reveal their emotions or write in the first person pronoun so these essays are highly objective whereas we can say that descriptive or narrative essays are sometimes subjective. Last but not the least since I mentioned that there could be so many other examples but these are the major types persuasive essays. While like an expository essay in its presentation of facts the global uh, goal of uh, the persuasive essay is to convince the reader to accept the writer's point of view or recommendation. The writer must build a cause uh, in a case using facts and logic as well as examples and by uh, using expert opinions and uh, that should sound reasonable. Uh, the writer should 
present all sides of the argument but must be able to communicate clearly and without equivocation why a certain position is correct. So talking about uh, some uh, latest model of scientific invention, uh, we are giving our own experiences with that and those help other people understand how the things work, th uh, how the thing works. Moreover, uh, this tells us that how to present our logic behind liking or favoring certain thing and uh, if our words are convincing enough so the reader is convinced and he is uh, like uh, persuaded by the writings that we have submitted. So when you are writing something, then you need to follow certain steps. Especially if the writing is formal, then these steps are mandatory for a writer to uh, take care of. For example, brainstorming, outlining, drafting, revising and editing. So whenever we are writing any formal documentation, we need to follow these five steps. So these are the steps of writing process. If we are following these writing process steps, we are able to come up with very good written material. And in case of essay writing, we should be following these things if we want to create a good impression of our writing skills. So brainstorming is very important, outlining is the soul of the essay, drafting is required, that is your skill, revising brings certain mistakes and editing is to uh, take care of uh, all the relevant things which need to be edited. So these uh, steps should be taken care of. Remember, whenever you are sitting in examination and you need to uh, display your writing structure then you should stop thinking about the exam time you should concentrate completely on the topic you are to write about this thing is called brainstorming in which you think you gather you generate your ideas and you gather them about a topic when you brainstorm write down every idea that comes to you so this is basically your rough work. This is not your uh, like uh, attempting of the question. This has to be done in uh, some rough uh, rough place of your paper somewhere. So you need to write down every idea, every single thought that comes to you about the topic that you have to write about. Gather as many ideas as you can. Like this is our planning. If we are planning good, we are uh, getting good results. If we're, if we're not planning well, we're not likely to get better results in the end. So in this way, we need to think one thing. Remember, whenever you are writing something, you're writing an application, you're writing an essay, you're writing a paragraph, you should be taking care of one thing that every other person is writing the same thing. There's so many students right now who are working on the same question. Now, what is the thing that makes you different? So that thing will be uh, identified by you in your brainstorming process. So during your brainstorming, you need to gather all the ideas that come to you about the topic. And then after you have uh, written them, then you need to choose the better ideas. Those ideas which you think are unique and which make you different from the rest of the people. Remember, if 100 people appear in a CSS paper, then there must be very selected people who, who pass the examination. The ratio out of 100 is only 5%. So it is up to you to come in 95% or in 5%. So your brainstorming will determine this thing that whether you're going to make it or whether you're going to lose it. Now there are certain types of brainstorming that you can do. You can make a list of the topics that come to your mind. <coughs> you can freely write them anywhere or you can start mapping them. Like you can 
make it sh in, in a shape of a tree, you can make in a shape of a circle, you can make in a shape of boxes which are connected and you're uh, making a chronological sequence of them. So it is up to you to choose any type of brainstorming. Main thing is that you need to brainstorm. Now the guidelines that I'm going to give you in this slide are quite essential for you if you're appearing in any examination where you need to, where you're facing uh, paragraph writing. So first of all, think about the topic. Write down any idea that comes to your mind. If you feel some ideas are bad, cross them. If you feel that you need to add details to some ideas, do add them. And the best way to brainstorm is just close your eyes, concentrate on the topic, and think that this is at high time for you to write something in the best possible words and feel this thing that uh, if today you are able to give the best of your writing skills or you, you are able to display your best writing structure that will get you very good score or that will get you a very good job. So just Keep these points in your mind and then start thinking about the ideas. You will feel motivated. Like, no, there's so many people who try to appear in certain exams, but they do not reach that place where they are practically sitting and they are uh, taking their examination. So you are the selected ones. So think and feel motivated. Now you must be knowing that we do not give headings in any essay. So first of all, we should gather the ideas in a sequence if we are making outlines. So outlines are the replacement of the headings. Then we should write them in proper and creative order. So that creativity uh, will be talked about uh, almost in the end of essay when we are talking about coherence. So we should write them in proper order and then we should think about the content and the size and the words of each outline. So we should be knowing that how much of material do we have about certain paragraphs of an essay with us. So we should divide the essay into certain paragraphs and outlines and then we should think about the size of essay and that is to be done within our mind. And then we should choose which ideas to talk about first, which to talk about next, and which to talk about last. If we are able to create a very good and impressive outline, you should consider that half of your essay is already written. Because this is your brainstorming. This is your planning. If you are having good base of something, the structure will also be very good. But if your base is weak, your uh, magnificence of structure will never matter. So we should properly outline the essay and then we should go for it. And if you're preparing for some competitive examination, not only writing your essay is important, but also creating a creative and properly sequenced outline matters the most. People who are preparing for CSS exam, they're paying more attention towards the outlining of something more than writing the essay itself. Because if you are having good outline, it means you are having the best essay. Now here I have an example. So if you are having an essay, Pakistan and terrorism, so first of all, what we will do is we'll create an outline. So the outline can be like this. First of all, introduction, the meaning and evolution of terrorism. Now this means that this means that my first paragraph will deal with the introduction, meaning and evolution of the term terrorism. Then my second paragraph will be about Pakistan and terrorism. So how terrorism has uh, uh, jolted our country so that uh, such things will be discussed in this outline. And then types of terrorism in Pakistan and then bad effects that it produces on society, then the ways to curb terrorism, and then the conclusion. It means that my complete essay will be divided into six 
paragraphs and those six paragraphs will be talking ab about these six main themes which I have discussed in the outline. So structuring a good outline which is in proper sequence helps us writing a good essay. So by the end of this lecture I'll be telling you how I am using each uh, paragraph or each he heading which will be in shape of topic sentence and how I am connecting them. That is a science. We can learn that uh, if we pay some attention to it. Remember you will never get this thing in any other video lecture available on YouTube. So this is requiring your complete attention and your concentration. Our next stage is drafting. Write the ideas from your outline into complete sentences and a paragraph. Don't worry about making it perfect because you may need to revise your draft so many times. So don't be afraid of revisions. First of all, write whatever comes to your mind and complete the first draft of your paragraph. In case we are using computer for the sake of writing essays, then we should follow these things. Uh, the margin of uh, the essay from all sides should be one inch. The spacing is quite necessary in a good essay composition. Uh, every good essay should be double spaced. So a double space is a good distance of space between two lines. Uh, each paragraph should begin with an indentation. So indentation comes from the tab uh, button on your keyboards or on your laptops. And then underlining the important things. So this is uh, bo about both if you're writing it uh, uh, with a pen or using computer for the sake of writing. Whatever you feel important, you should underline it. Because sometimes the examiner may be uh, in some hurry or he just uh, like uh, when, whenever he looks at some underlined things, he automatically goes uh, or his eyes visit that particular area and that thing can impress upon him. So all those details which you feel uh, the best of your essay should be underlined. So once you have done writing, then it comes the time of revising it. So when you are uh, reading your essay again, change and improve the content of your writing if you are not satisfied. Think about what uh, uh, you can uh, change in your essay in order to make it better. You might find some words that need to be revisited. You, you may find certain sentences which you feel should be changed or you may uh, want to change the order of certain thought. So this comes in revision. So whenever you are revising it, you should be taking care of this fact. So for example, if when, whenever you are revising your essay, take out all unnecessary details or sentences. If you feel so that some sentence is uh, repeated or some details are unnecessary, you should revise them and you should delete them. If you want to change the order of sentences, that is all up to you. We'll be talking about the order of sentences uh, shortly after some time. And if you want to add certain good words of vocabulary, now this is the time for you to add them. So you can change them. The, all of this is going to be done in your final draft, not the complete essay which is once done. So this is to be added to the final draft of your essay. So the final stage is editing. So when you have revised your writing, try to check the grammar, capitalization, punctuation and spelling errors. If you're writing it online, sometimes Microsoft Words, Microsoft Word helps you in this. But if you're writing it offline, manually with your hand, then you should uh, take an expert opinion. Uh, and uh, if you're sitting in examination, you should pay proper concentration in your double checking of the paragraph or essay that what mistakes are committed so you can now avoid those mistakes and correct your essay. Now this is the second part of our video lecture which is talking about the organization of essay. 
An essay is some paragraph with topic sentence and supporting sentences and a concluding sentence too. The topic sentence introduces the topic and tells what the writer will say about this topic in a single paragraph. The sentences that follow further explain and support the topic sentence. They are called supporting sentences. The concluding sentence often repeats information in the topic and uh, in quite a different way. In essay writing, we are more concerned about topic sentence and the supporting sentences. So in uh, the topic sentences, uh, the topic sentence basically re uh, replaces the heading. So we made six outlines in the outline we discussed before. It means that uh, we are having six paragraphs. So those six paragraphs will begin with a topic sentence that will work like a heading so that the reader knows that what we are going to talk about in one paragraph of the whole essay. Similarly, all the paragraphs will be uh, uh, represented through the topic sentences. The topic sentence. So the, to the topic sentence is usually the first or second sentence in a paragraph. Normally it is the first sentence which is uh, used as a heading. It introduces a new idea. So you come with new idea in uh, the topic sentence. For example, if we are having uh, uh, an essay that is having five to six paragraph, so each paragraph will be stating certain new thought or new idea about the same topic. For example, we can talk about terrorism, we can talk about the evolution of terrorism, we can talk about uh, the terrorism and its types, we can talk about the horrors of terrorism. So this is all about terrorism. So our each paragraph will be starting with certain uh, new thought that will be in shape of a topic sentence. And the topic sentence presents the topic like it does not deviate from the topic itself. It is very much linked to the topic. The thought is very much the same. Uh, certain uh, uh, differences are there. For example, first you were talking about uh, the horrors of terrorism. Uh, in next paragraph, you were talking about how to curb terrorism. So the topic is same. There are certain variations in how to deal about the topic. It explains what the writer will uh, write about the topic and uh, uh, like what he will state about the topic. Uh, like what he feels about the topic in a way. This explanation is called the controlling idea that the writer is uh, initiating his own explanation, his own feeling about something. For example, if uh, we are reading a paragraph on uh, uh, visiting a hilly area, so I may not be liking the hilly areas. And if I am writing something about it, uh, it depends upon my thought that what kind of thoughts I am uh, throwing in the paragraph. So it is all about the writer, what kind of thoughts he has about the topic. And these thoughts are called the controlling ideas that the writer is using. Now this is the example of a topic sentence or certain topic sentences. So topic is primarily my friend and there is some controlling idea attached. So uh, the main figure is the person, the friend about whom we are writing and then there is some controlling idea that is attached with uh, the topic. For example, my friend who is an honest person, my friend who is the funniest person I know and my friend has a terribly dangerous job. So these are uh, the topic sentences in which the main topic is my friend and the controlling ideas are written in front of that like an honest person, the funniest person or does terribly dangerous jobs. So these are the controlling ideas. For example, hilly areas uh, is a topic and the controlling ideas is like hilly areas are 
dangerous uh, hilly areas and the landsliding in them hilly areas and the cold in those areas so these are the controlling ideas that we can use along with the topic sentences so if uh, we are writing about uh, the topic and the topic is my friend then we need to be dividing the paragraph uh, uh, into certain different sentences and uh, those sentences would be having some controlling ideas so that's how we work on the topic sentence and that controls the thought of the whole paragraph supporting sentences they add information about the topic and the controlling idea and supporting sentences can include definitions explanations examples now this is the thing i was talking about that we are practically working on writing an essay so this is uh, what we call coherence so each idea of essay should be connected with the next idea for example this was our first paragraph in which we were talking about terrorism and its evolution so uh, i am reading out this paragraph in front of you and you will see what is different in this terrorism is a buzz word but its evolution dates back to the first murder in history this was a murder of abel by cain both of them were the sons of the holy prophet adam peace be upon him abel followed the commandments and wishes of his father whereas uh, cain was sometimes protesting he protested on the issue of marriage as well to solve this dispute at hazrat adam peace be upon him suggested them to sacrifice something and uh, acceptance of any of them will prove allah's will abel presented a goat and cain offered the corn allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted abel's sacrifice and rejected cain's offerings not accepting the decision of allah he killed his own brother abel this was the first killing on earth which led to the beginning of terrorism after that it has destroyed the peace of the world on a massive scale pakistan too has suffered a lot because of its horrors now uh, let's analyze this written work written material sentence by sentence so if you look at the first sentence which is terrorism is a buzzword but its evolution dates back to the first murder in history so look how i am linking one sentence with another that uh, i mentioned the first murder and the next line is uh, complementing the first line this was a murder of abel by cain so now i need to mention who they were so both of them were the sons of holy prophet adam peace be upon him and then uh, why uh, something about his adam and why this happened Abel followed the commands and wishes of his father, and uh, Abel was sometimes protesting. So I linked protest to the next line. He protested on the issue of marriage as well, and since it was a dispute, so linked with the next line to solve this dispute, as Adam peace be upon him suggested them to sacrifice something, and acceptance of any of them will prove Allah's will. And uh, since we were talking about uh, sacrificing something, so Abel presented a goat, and Cain offered corn. and then it is about up, up to allah to accept one so allah accepted abel's sacrifice and rejected cain's offering so this was allah's decision so that is connected to the next line that not accepting the decision of allah he killed his own brother abel so again this killing is related to the next line this was the first killing on earth which led to the beginning of terrorism after this it has destroyed the peace of the world on a massive scale so what this is what happened afterwards and then i mentioned pakistan too has suffered a lot because of its horrors so why i have mentioned pakistan i'll tell later first of all whenever we are creating or writing an essay that should be written with some creative introduction that should be some having some catching introduction because the uh, examiner he will have to go through so many essays so th the beginning of your essay should be so persuasive or should be so catching that he should read it word by word so as i was saying i mentioned pakistan too has suffered a lot because of its horrors so i why did i mention it 
because I needed to create connecting hooks. So connecting hooks are created between or among the paragraphs of an essay. We connect both of them so that the thoughts remain connected. The way I connected the thought of one line to another, in the same way we connect the thought of one paragraph to the other. So since this was our outline, we have already discussed the first one and look at the second heading. So Pakistan and terrorism. So this is the reason I mentioned Pakistan in the end of the first paragraph. Our last line of the paragraph was Pakistan too has suffered a lot because of its horrors. And the next heading was Pakistan and terrorism. So the first paragraph is automatically linked with the coming paragraph which is about the same thing. In the same way the last line with the next heading is to be connected. The heading of the last line should complement the beginning of the next outline. Now, uh, for example, the second paragraph ends at Pakistan too has suffered a lot uh, because of its horrors. Uh, 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 sorry, the first paragraph's last uh, line. So it is connected to the second heading, Pakistan and terrorism. Again, recalling the outline. So the next, we are talking about the types of terrorism in Pakistan. So this is our third paragraph. So the second paragraph should end with such a line that should complement with the next uh, heading which is uh, like uh, types of terrorism in Pakistan. So there is not only one way in which Pakistan has suffered the horrors of terrorism. Rather there are many types in which it exists in our country. So this may be the last line of the uh, second paragraph. And that is complementing the first line or the topic sentence of the next uh, heading or next paragraph and uh, if uh, the fourth paragraph is about the bad effects it produces on society then the third paragraph should end in this way in its any shape like there are so many types we were talking about types of terrorism in the third one so if in in its any shape it has given several jolts to the country whatever it, uh, its kinds are, it has always destroyed the country in many ways. So the next heading then will be the bad effects it produces on the society. And then uh, it should end with, uh, the bad effects should end with, indeed it is horrible evil, but there's always hope, solution and cure for everything. And next is the ways to curb terrorism. I hope you are, you are understanding what I mean to say. So this is complementing the next heading and in this way we are connecting one thought with another, one uh, paragraph with another. So the ending line of each paragraph should complement the topic sentence of the next paragraph and each line of the sentence should complement with the next line of the same paragraph. So this is coherence. If we are writing with this uh, thing in our mind we are able to produce better paragraph and remember every person is writing the paragraphs it depends upon you how better or different you are in your writing following these steps of creating coherence and connecting hooks will not work in one day so for this purpose you need to practice and you need to practice a lot in that way you will be able to write uh, a paragraph in which all the sentences will be connected and an essay in which all the paragraphs are also connected. So I hope you understood it. Thank you very much. We'll keep coming with more informational video. Stay tuned.